Yo, let's talk about the AFC North, man. Welcome to Rambling with Saint, man. We're talking AFC North football today. So, <clears throat> you look at the AFC North, man. You got three teams in the AFC North right now. That's three and one. Baltimore, Cincy, Cleveland. And the Pittsburgh still is rocking the bottom of this division right now with one and three. Rocking it. I respect it. It's, it's really funny because Cleveland, the, the division is usually a strong division. And this year, uh... Pittsburgh and Cincy done basically traded spots, bro. But basically in this video, I'm going to tell you how I feel about the four teams, who I think the best teams in the division are, are the uh, three teams with the 3-1 and one record sustainable, and other type shit dealing with these three teams. Now, obviously, I'm a Baltimore fan, so if you haven't looked at any of my videos and this is the first time you're checking out a video of mine, for one, I want to say I appreciate you for that because you didn't have to click on the video, and you did. So you were curious to see what this muff was talking about. So I I'm going to ask you just real quick to like the video, subscribe to the channel, Share the video to Raven fans and other football fans. And I appreciate you for that. So, let's talk about the Steelers first. The team last place in the division, man. They look rough right now. I kind of feel for that defense, too, because I know what it's like to have a good defense, but a bad offense, man. And, and at this point, Pittsburgh's offense isn't even just bad. It's, like, unproductive. And that's that's even, to me, worse than being bad. Because you can have a bad offense to still put up points and shit and find ways to uh, win games. Pittsburgh offense at this point just um, became purely just straight up unproductive, bro. It's like they struggle to move the ball. like, And that's a problem. And now you can blame it on Big Ben's age, him deteriorating. He might not have it no more. He can't throw the ball as great no more. You can blame. I think it would be crazy to just blame Ben. I'm not saying it ain't been. Listen, <laughs> I don't like Big Bam as much as the next person, but I, I don't think that the receivers is as great as people would like to make you believe if you don't watch Pittsburgh. I don't think they create a ton of separation all the time. They great at beating dudes deep. <laughs> like, I like Chase Claypool, and you a lot of the times when you're seeing these highlights of Stiller players, man, they... They beating dudes deep. And I don't like Juju Smith-Schuster, but I give it to him. He probably the 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 most complete receiver on the team as far as, like, he can go across the middle and shit like that. Real funny, though, that that's where he wanted to go back to uh, instead of signing with Baltimore or, Ch or the Chiefs. But anyways, that shit type shit loyalty will do to you. And I'm quotation marks around that shit called loyalty. But Pittsburgh look rough right now, man. And it's crazy because when you got a defense like Pittsburgh, you really don't know. Like, you know that Pittsburgh's defense when healthy is good. But you know right now they nowhere near as good as they were last year. And that's a problem because they might still be a good defense. But because they can't, uh, they not what they was last year, it's hard for them to overcome just how bad that offense is. And the offense, you could probably say – this is what's crazy. Big Ben got the second most passing yards in the division out of the four quarterbacks. It's Mar, Ben, um, <laughs> Joe Burrow, and Baker Midfield. But Ben's yards is a little bit flawed and a little bit fraudulent when you think about some of these yards, and a lot of them is a dink dunk type run after the catch and the uh, game already over and he's still passing for and shit. So. I don't, I don't really know if what you want to blame it on, if it's one thing. I just think that Pittsburgh, I th I don't really think you can blame it on one thing, to be honest with you. I, yeah, Ben is bad, and that don't help because when you got a bad quarterback, that that just fuck everything else up. And it, and, and it opened up, and you can see all the flaws because a great quarterback can just put a Band-Aid over a whole bunch of different wounds, bro, like – and Rodgers was carrying a atrocious defense to the playoffs in a year-in, year-out basis, bro. Um, Peyton Manning, late in his Colts career, was carrying a atrocious Colts defense. It was nowhere near as bad as that uh, Packers defense, but it wasn't that Colts defense that it was in the early parts of Peyton's career. So, you, you, great quarterbacks or good quarterbacks above average quarterbacks now let's stick with the good and great the great and uh quarterbacks they can uh, put a band-aid over the uh flaws and whatnot and that just so i get it if people want to blame ben but i think you got to go with ben struggling right now and it might be the end of ben's career who knows but the receivers to me ain't aren't as great as people would have you believe so they can't get ben out of this funk because they have to be perfect and they not that right now 
the offensive line is not that good. They don't protect Ben good enough. They don't open up enough holes, if any, for the running game. Like Najee Harris was supposed to come in and fix this for Pittsburgh to try to take some pressure off of Ben. And it's hard when you when Ben is struggling and he can't rely on a running game. It's tough. So regardless if Pittsburgh's defense is good or not, it's going to be hard for them to overcome an offense that's just straight up unproductive at this point. And maybe they can turn it around because Mike Tomlin is that guy. I fuck with Mike Tomlin heavy. I think he's a good head coach, even though he pulled that bullshit one year where he tried to trip Jacoby Jones. Well, he actually did trip him, basically, and stopped him from scoring on a kick return or a punt return. I can't remember which one it was. But nonetheless, he a great head coach. And so if somebody going to be able to figure this shit out, maybe it's him. But he ain't never been an offensive-minded head coach. And I don't really know where you go right now if you go away from being like – it just was reported that he had an injury too. But where who who do you go? Dwayne Haskins? You're not going to Kyle Rudolph. No, I mean Mason Rudolph. No shot. You go to Mason Rudolph. So shit, it's looking bad for Pittsburgh right now, and it's crazy because I could see them beating Baltimore, Cincy, and um, Cleveland because that's the type of team they are. That's the type of organization they are. But, man, it's hard to see them doing that right now with as bad as they uh, offense is. But then we move on to uh, Cincinnati. Now, Cincinnati uh, team done look decent this year. They offense done look decent. I don't think no team in the division done played a great four-quarter game yet. And we'll get to Cleveland and Baltimore in a, in a minute. But talking about Cincy, I think Cincy the third best team in the division right now. <laughs> and it's funny because I think Joe Burrow is the second best quarterback in the division right now. And I don't even think, think it's close. Like, I think Baker and Big Ben are so far and below uh, Lamar and um, Joe Burrow that it's, it's, it's laughable to even put him in those two in the conversation at this point. Like, you put Ben in there over uh, career accomplishments and shit, but not off of these last two seasons. But Joe Burrow looked good. And all I know is people kept trying to tell me that um, DeMar Chase couldn't catch. Or Jamar Chase couldn't catch. Um, I apologize if I fucked his name up. But all I know is he got four touchdowns in his first four games. So if that's not being able to catch, boy, I take that not catching every day of the week. Trust me, I am a Baltimore fan. I know what not catching look like. But the Cincinnati's uh, offense, bro, if you looked at my video about them when they played the Jacks, I still feel the same way about them. For one, you can't really take much from a game against the Jaguars because the Jaguars are like 0-19 in their last 19 games. The thing is, excuse me, boy, this guy Urban Meyer, man, team losing this dude still thinking in college or something, man. I don't even got a problem with him, you know, uh, in the club uh, with his finger in a uh, young lady's booty hole. But damn, bro, what the fuck you think this is, bro? You need these cameras and shit around you, a professional head coach, bro. Fuck you thought you was Casper or something, man? You thought nobody was going to see you doing this? And then when it came out, the man married and shit, bro. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Now, see, that shit don't really bother me like it probably bothered other people because I'm a grown-ass man and I understand people cheat a day, B. <laughs> You'll get over it. That's just the reality of the situation, bro. Trust me. Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce. And anybody can be cheated on. I, I, that's just the reality of the situation. But I'm thinking to myself, like, yo, how how more of a bozo can you be? Like, come on, B. Tighten up. But, <laughs> and then the Jags broke practice uh, this week by saying grind. <laughs> grind on me. But anyways, man, back to Cincy, man. So, that's the type of team, in my opinion, in that game, that's the type of team you should dominate, but they didn't. They were getting dominated in the beginning of that game. And it's like I said in that video, since he looked great on the first drive until the uh, penalty cost them by Jamar Chase. And then from that, after that drive, all the way to the end of the second uh, quarter, they looked like they had never ran offensive drives or plays in their life. Like, it just looked absolutely, like, I don't even know what you would call it. It just looked bad. And then they defense that some people say is a good defense and whatnot. Shout out Jesse Bates because I fuck with Jesse Bates. But the defense that I think is a decent defense, I don't think it's a bad defense at all. Since his defense was even decent last year when they was uh, a bad offense and when Bruh got hurt. But they got torched by the Jacksonville Jaguars. And if you go watch the Jacksonville Jaguars in that game, 
you would come back thinking to yourself, how in the hell is they torturing them when this offensive play calling by Jacksonville really not that great either? Like, Trevor Lawrence was doing a lot early in the game, and I guess his motor just finally ran dry in the second half because the defense did get some stops in the second half, but it was helped along by the fact that since he scored every single drive in the second half of that game. But that's a game you should dominate. And in the second half of that game, they looked like a team that was, you know, a contender in the uh, playoffs and whatnot. So it's hard to really know what sense he is. But I'm glad they play Green Bay this week because that's going to be a great test. Like seeing them against Aaron Rodgers, that's the type of game where you Joe Burrow not just going up against um, the defense. Like he going up against Aaron Rodgers too because you got to match score for score with what Aaron Rodgers do. So this is going to be a big game and a big test for them. But I, this is one of them teams I really want to see them competing against great teams before I really can say how good they is. Because that 3-1 record could be what I thought the 3-0 record was for Denver, bro. So I'm going to just hold off right now. Even though I like Joe Burrow, I think he's the second best quarterback in the division. I'm going to just hold off for a quick second on them, all right? Second best team in the division to me right now. And another team that's 3-1. and one. And a team that actually got the best defense in the division. And once you hear this, you're going to say, why in the fuck is this not the best team in the division? But Cleveland Browns. Cleveland is a good fucking team, bro. There's no two ways around it. Cleveland's defense to me is the best in the division. And I saw that they was ranked second in the NFL. But boy, any given week they could be the best in the NFL. Like, since he got a good D, de- I mean since he. Cleveland got Miles Garrett, stud. Denzel Ward made a f- stupid play against the uh, Vikings. Um, they got uh, the other dude that they got from uh, that they signed from the Rams. I'm I'm, I'm sorry for uh, forgetting his name. He is stud. The uh, Jadavian Clowney, I'm always going to think is a stud. I got to go watch J- get Jadavian Clowney play in person, so I fuck with Jadavian Heavy. Um Plus, I understand that you don't only have to get sacks to be a productive player, bro. Like, people will still tell you J.J. Watt, one of the best defensive linemen in football, and that man ain't even played a ton of games over the last couple of years or been on. That's neither here nor there. But Cleveland's defense legit, bro. And the way you know Cleveland is a good team is because in the last couple of weeks, if you take away the um Chiefs game, Cleveland's offense done looked atrocious. Cleveland's offense done looked... Jarvis Landry hurt, and that's done hurt Baker because that's his favorite target, and that's his most reliable target because that's who he, like, that's who, when he came into the league, that's who he had, but Baker Mayfield has been below average so far, and y'all already know I don't fuck with Baker already, but listen, man, what more did this man need? He got the best offensive line in football. Yeah, Jarvis Landry hurt, but you still got Odell Beckham and one of the best tight end cores in football with Njoku and Hooper. You got the best offensive line in football, which I'm pretty sure I just said. But then you got the best running back core in football because they got the best rushing attack in football. And like I just said, the number two defense in the NFL, one of the best players on the defensive side in the NFL, one of the better secondary players when he healthy on the side of the ball in the NFL. And Baker Mayfield is still the weakest link on this team, bro. He is holding that team back, bro. And I really find it funny that people give Lamar Jackson a lot of hate and a lot of criticism and a lot of unfair and unwarranted criticism. They completely ignore all his success and just only talk about the bad things that uh, happen or his mistakes and shit. But we continue to pump out, well, not we. The media, can, them same media people continue to pump out excuses for Baker Mayfield, bro. Did we forget that Baker Mayfield was the number one pick in the draft? When you're the number one pick in the draft, Bo, you are drafted to be the guy. Like, we are expecting you to be the man. And what I want Cleveland fans to understand for a second is, because I I be seeing Cleveland fans say on Twitter and other type of social medias and shit, like, oh, well, we ain't never been this consistent until we got Baker and blah, blah, blah. Um, Sometimes chance meets opportunity bro or luck meets opportunity and to me that's one of these type situations if i'm saying that right baker mayfield just luckily hit the right uh number at the right time and found the right opportunity because they are winning in spite of baker not because of baker listen i agree this is the most consistent the cleveland browns have ever been but let's step back for a second You got the second best defense in football, one of the best defensive players in football who almost won defensive player of the year, only losing it to the best defensive player in the last decade, probably, Aaron Donald. 
You got the two best headed monster in that backfield in Chubb and Hunt. You got great receivers in Odell and uh, Jarvis Landry, great tight ends, and the best offensive line in football. With a phenomenal head coach in Kevin Stefanski, who's already proven he is a good head coach. What more does he need? Who has done less with more than Baker than Baker Mayfield, bro? Could you imagine if this is the supporting cast Lamar Jackson had? Because who's done more with less than Lamar Jackson? I'll wait. Mike, if, we st- if you stop hating for a second and just look at it and say to yourself, man, could you imagine what Cleveland would be if they had Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers? Like, come on, man. Baker Mayfield is playing bad, bro. He has been an average quarterback since he's been in the league. And people like to harp on like, oh, well, he got a good completion percentage and shit like that. Bro, when, let me let me let me explain something to you. When you have those two great running backs in the backfield who gash people for about four or five yards a carry. Listen, for one, that's already half of the uh, down, uh, half of the yard that you need to pick up a first down because a first down is 10 yards. So you got two running backs who are already popping for half of that or more on any run on a carry. But now you can run a play action to make the defenders come up and play the running backs and you're going to have guys getting wide the fuck open for 10 yards, uh, maybe 15 yards. Sometimes they'll even pop open all the way down the field. That's the type of offense that Cleveland runs. Those type of offenses don't ask the quarterback to drop back and make decisions and stuff like that. It's just saying drop back, use the run as the advantage, and just hit the wide open person because the defense is going to be playing the run. If you're judging Baker for being great off of being able to do that, then you think Mac Jones is the next coming of Tom Brady. Because I'm just telling you off of why. And I don't watch highlights. I watch full Cleveland Brown games. I'm just telling you right now. Lamar Jackson would have won a Super Bowl with this team by now. I firmly, truly believe that. You can call me biased. You can call me what you want to. But if you step back and look what Lamar done done with nowhere near the uh, level of talent that Cleveland has, and you put him on that team with that unanimous MVP and the, what he's been able to do, because Lamar Jackson been carrying Baltimore since he got into the league and since he became the starter. It, you can't argue that. <laughs> it's, just, it's not possible for you to argue that. It's too many stats that would argue against you trying to argue that. So what I'm saying is, as great as I think Cleveland is, and what's funny is the reason I put Cincinnati in third is because I don't think on – if I'm looking at every team on their best day – I don't think Cincinnati could beat none of the three teams in this division on their best day. Even though they already done beat Pittsburgh, if Pittsburgh came out there and was having their best game, and since he came out there and had their best game, I think Pittsburgh would still win somehow. And that's why they're in third also, because I don't think even on Cleveland, I think Cleveland could have a subpar game, and I believe they could still beat Cincinnati. Because even though Joe Burrow is a good quarterback, he hasn't had to... uh, play in the big moments yet this year he gonna be playing in a lot of big games if his team keep beating the teams they supposed to be because then when they play against the tough teams he gonna be asked to step up and win those and i think cleveland's defense is the best in the division for one so i'm gonna go ahead and already say that that's the best defense in our division and i think their defense is so good that they gonna do what the steelers defense was able to do for the Steelers last year, cover up all the flaws on the offense and whatnot. Have you ever seen a receiver, an all-pro receiver, who them, excuse me, who's proven already that they legit get more blame for a quarterback's uh, flaws than Odell? I swear, since Odell done been there, bro, he been taking all the blame for Baker. And they keep hitting people with this old oh, chemistry and shit. The throws that he was missing to Odell on Sunday was just ridiculous, bro. Don't give me that bullshit, oh, they need chemistry and he been out for. Those are basic, wide-open fucking throws that any quarterback should be able to make any fucking day of the week. And Baker wasn't making them. But excuses, excuses. Man, now they talking about he got a labrum tear, bro. I'm just not surprised at the amount of excuses that they'll come up with for uh, Baker Mayfield, bro. Who, again, was a number one pick in a league where the quarterback is drafted to be the carrying, driving force of your team. He's consistently getting carried and driven around. So... With that being said, I still think Cleveland's defense is just otherworldly right now, bro. If Cleveland go out there and their defense had the best game they can have, 
they will torture you. I mean, ask Justin Fields, bro. I think that's how good they is. And Miles Garrett, that dude, man. So, and like I said, I love Jadavian Clowney, Denzel Ward. Them boys is legit to me. So, I think Cleveland the second best team in this division. But the reason they finish in second in this division, because I really do love Cleveland's defense. I really do love Cleveland's defense. And I love Cleveland's running game. And I think those receivers, especially when Landry get back healthy, will still be able to up. They will be able to raise Baker's level. They're going to be able to carry Baker. That's how good I think Cleveland is. I legitimately think Cleveland is good. Even though they ain't proven shit. I think Cleveland is that good on those other aspects of the ball and with Kevin Stefanski that they can overcome Baker. The problem is they will lose when they run into a team like Baltimore, a team that might have some flaws and things on offense and defense, but are overall a good team. And not only are they a good team, they have a quarterback that can put their team on their back. And that's exactly what Lamar can do. Those are the type of teams that they, the, uh, Excuse me. Those are the type of teams that Cleveland going to struggle with. They already lost to one this year. The Chiefs. When they have to play against teams, they have a good quarterback that can carry their team. When they missing a receiver or missing a lineman or not, their defense not having their best game. Those are the type of games that are in the type of teams that Cleveland is going to struggle to beat. And it's already been proven. Lamar Jackson 4-1 and one against Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield has never beaten Patrick Mahomes. Baker Mayfield struggles against the teams with the great quarterback. So, all I'm saying is, when you look at the uh, Ravens right now, listen, I will say this to the... I, I will sing this in every fucking video if I have to. The Ravens linebacking core is a problem. Patrick Queen is a problem, bro. I'm, I'm not sugarcoating it no more. I'm not finna be nice. I'm not finna try to sense on myself. Patrick Queen is a problem. The Cowboys just released Jalen Smith, and that man actually had a Pro Bowl year and was considered a great linebacker at one point in time. To say Patrick Queen is a great, to say he's a good linebacker at this point would just be capping uh, you going off of his LSU uh, production. I don't know if is he too small. I don't know if is he not strong enough. I don't know what it is that's not translating for Patrick Queen. But right now, Patrick Queen is not it. He's a atrocious tackler. It feel like he missed about three to four or five tackles a game. He's can he always in bad position in the pass coverage. He's bad in pass coverage. He sometimes he'll you'll think he about to make a tackle and the dude to drag him five extra yards, or you'll think he about to make a tackle and the dude about to break him until somebody come in and help him with an assist. Patrick Queen is a problem right now, and if I can see it, the fans can see it, because I see fans talking about it all the time. I, I saw a dude the other day tweet, man, I don't give a damn how good or bad Jalen Smith is. Just get him raving so uh, I can get uh, stop looking at Patrick Queen every fucking week. And it was a dude under that who was like, yo, what are you talking about? Patrick Queen's a top 10, I mean top 3 linebacker, and I instantly thought to myself, I'm like, yeah, so, so say you don't watch Baltimore without saying you don't watch Baltimore. But that's my biggest problem with Baltimore, man, that linebacking court. Just too many missed tackles. And some people say, well, Malik Harris done looked worse. Well, I disagree. And also, Malik Harris was not a starter this year, I mean last year, and would not be starting this year if LJ Fort was hurt. See, that's the biggest problem is LJ Fort hurt. He covered up a lot of Patrick Queen's problems for most people. Not for me because I've been harping on this for a minute because I really be watching this shit on defense. Like, I really pay attention to this shit. Which is another thing. I think the Ravens secondary done been way better than people thought they was going to be. They've been way better than I thought they was going to be. You got Jimmy Smith healthy now. He playing uh, good. Anthony Averett, double A. He been hooping. Like straight up hooping. Didn't even know he was going to play last week and he been balling. Deshaun Elliott was hurt, missed last week. He back on the practice field, so we'll see if he play this week. Then you got um Chuck Clark been balling. I saw Calais Campbell had the best grade of the, every player on the team, which would be Lamar if not for drops and shit like that. And a couple mistakes he made in the uh early on in the season. But man, the, it was crazy when I saw that. But Baltimore's defense, man, they just getting healthier and healthier. And what's crazy is they playing better and better. Now, they played Jared Goff and Teddy Britt, Teddy Midwater, two quarterbacks that I do not think very highly of. Like, to me, those two quarterbacks is down in there around the Baker midfield uh, category. So I don't think too highly of them. But Baltimore's passing offense looked great, and I think highly of uh, Denver's passing uh, defense. And Lamar and them boys look great. Shout out Hollywood Brown. Call God, my guy. Call 
God, you saw that touchdown catch. That's how you rebound, bro. That's how you rebound after a, a bad performance uh, the previous week, man. So shout out to Hollywood, bro. He was Hollywood again, bro. That was that was big time. But Baltimore's offense done look good when they and they've been passing this year. They haven't even been running it really because the running and it was funny because I had said that I didn't think they was gonna really miss J.K. but they would miss Edwards. Nah, I think they really miss both of them. Now, Lamar making up for that, but you, I don't really like that Lamar keep having to run so much because we're not getting as much production from the running backs. But I think the healthier uh, Le'Veon Bell get, if he isn't as healthy, like I don't know if he's dealing with a health problem or nothing, but I know the more he and Murray get acquainted with the offense and whatnot, the better they'll be. I trust it. And some people was thinking that Tyson Williams was benched or something like that for a specific reason. I remember they said Harbaugh only did it because he wanted to see what they had with a uh, multi-time pro bowl in Le'Veon Bell, which I agree with because I wanted to see that also. So I'm not mad at that. But that was my thoughts on the AFC North. And what? how do I think these teams can get better? Well, I'm going to hold off on the Bengals because I want to see them against great teams because that, that's literally the thing that gets them better, beating better teams. Cleveland, Baker got to be better. That's plain and simple. It's literally one of the best teams in the league if Baker Mayfield plays even average. And for Baltimore, the linebackers have to tackle, bro. They have to get better at tackling, bro. It ain't just Patrick Queen, but he is the biggest problem, bro. They got to get better tackling, bro. And the receivers, hey, they are, to me, Sammy Watkins has been a godsend for this team, bro. He, he, I don't explain it in multiple videos, but because he played his position so well on the outside, now you got Marquise who can play in the slot, James Prochet balling. You got Duvernay balling. Mark, Mark Andrews getting open all the time now. He learning how to get open in zones and shit like that. So, man, Baltimore, if they defense like they linebacking core can uh, be better and they uh, pass rushers can get more consistent pressure on quarterbacks without having to blitz so much, Baltimore going to be a real fucking problem. A real fucking problem. And so, I think Baltimore is easily, like, the best team in the division right now. I don't even think it's close. Well, actually, actually, actually. Let me let me, let me, me take that back. It is close. Because that's how highly I think of Cleveland's defense. But it's just, I don't have much faith in Baker Mayfield. I'm going to just keep it a band with you, man. I'm not on that excuse of shit that everybody else gives them, bro. But I do, like I said, I think Cleveland's going to make the playoffs, and I think they're going to finish in second in the division. And because of how great that defense is, hey, the Ravens slip up here and there. Cleveland's defense can win enough games, even if not against us, to get that number one spot. But I think that's what's going to fuck them up is when they have to play teams that have great quarterbacks who can carry their team. I think it's just going to be too hard for Cleveland to overcome that with how Baker Mayfield playing. Now, Kevin Stefanski can scheme the fuck up out of our offense and end up getting you there. But I just think it's going to be real hard. And so I think Cleveland and Baltimore are the class of the division. They they are making the playoffs. I think both teams are making the uh, playoffs. Cincinnati, I, I, I want to see more. I'm interested. I just want to see more. It will be a big win. If they, if they beat the Packers this weekend, I, that, that's all I need to see. If they beat the Packers this weekend, that's all I need to see. They are legit to me if they beat the Packers. And for Pittsburgh, man, just, hey, call God. It's very funny that Big Ben did all that shit where he liked to throw his players under the bus and shit. And now look at you. Now look at you, bruh. It don't, that shit don't pay to be uh, ignorant, bruh. All these years of being an atrocious leader, bruh. Having the organization have your back and shit. And now look at you. The organization can't wait to get rid of your ass. Boy, boy, boy. And you notice, you don't see people coming to play for the Steelers. Pe the Steelers draft people. They receivers leave. That should have told you all you needed to know about him. People love, oh, boy, boy, boy. For the Steelers, though, man, good luck, man, because there's a lot of problems that offense need to fix. The offensive line, the passing game, the receiving game, the running game. Like, boy. And the defense getting banged up and whatnot, that don't help at all. So, hey, if you're still a fan, keep your blinders on because it's going to be a long one. But I appreciate y'all for joining me, man. I appreciate you for clicking on the video. If you made it this far to the video, bro, you dope as shit, bro. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that. You dope as shit. Brush your shoulder off. I appreciate you for joining me. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video, man. Hey, go post this in some of them Raven threads and football threads and say, hey, yo, this dude Saint dope as fuck, man. Check him out. And I'm going to appreciate that because when I get big, I'm going to remember that. And I'm going to be tossing money out left and right, bro. I'm trying to tell you, bro. When I get rich, we get rich, bro. All right. You heard me?
Are you ready to make history? Come on now. Yeah. You know, there's, there's these two words. And when I say them, people get goosebumps today. Because they know.